Chapter 6. Children. The following several days were rather heady ones for the little red squirrel who had become a mother. Never had she received so much attention and praise. Never had she been so talked about. The birth of the new babies is important news anywhere, and Gooseberry Park was no exception. Word spread quickly through the trees and burrows and along the river bank that triplets had been born to the busy red squirrel who collected yogurt cups. Friends Stumpy hadn't seen in months suddenly dropped by, carrying gifts of hard, pungent walnuts, or choice bits of ham sandwich, or the occasional french fry, which was considered quite a delicacy in park circles. Red, gray, and black squirrels oohed and odd. Morning doves cooed, starlings cackled, and cardinals peeked shyly over the edge of the nest. Even a fat old possum hoisted himself up the tree to pay his respects. A brisk, cold wind was blowing now, unusual for early April. The park was strangely quiet as the trees leaned into the chilly breezes. But Stumpy had no worries. She had three beautiful babies, a fine collection of treasures, and a wonderful new neighbor who loved to bring her egg rolls. The winds could blow as hard as they might. She was secure. Kona, of course, had been by to visit every day since the baby's arrival. She still hadn't met Murray since the bats slept most of the day. And, of course, Kona hadn't met Stumpy's children either. They were much too tiny to be carried down to the ground. But Stumpy herself came down when Kona called. Her name. And she told him all the wonderful details. She had said the little girl loved to sleep and that she sang in her sleep like a bird. The two baby boy squirrels liked to rest on each other and one preferred the bottom and one preferred the top. So she named them Top and Bottom. The little girl was called Sparrow for her pretty songs. Their eyes weren't even open yet. Stumpy said it was hard work being a mother to newborns. She, was, she couldn't waste time to explore for fun anymore. Whenever she left a nest, it was only to pull a few pine cones from a tree stump or to unearth a few acorns buried nearby. Then she had to hurry back home for her babies would be waking and crying to be fed. She had never felt so needed. She had never felt so tired. Still, she told Kona she was never so happy, and Murray visited every night. Kona trotted cheerfully back home and reported to Gwendolyn, word for word, everything Stumpy had told him. Though Gwendolyn had never met Stumpy personally, she regarded the squirrel as an old friend, and she was glad for the good news from Kona, glad for the babies in Gooseberry Park.